Thought and thinking. Understand your mind. To solve your problems. It was an important meeting. The manager was addressing the employees. Now everyone, I want your full attention here. Just then Raj's mobile rings. Panicking, Raj immediately switches it off. However, the manager got furious. This is unacceptable. You forgot to switch off your phone? You will be transferred to a remote location for your carelessness. I am really sorry. Please don't transfer me. Raj apologized. But, the manager didn't accept his apologies. Raj was so angry on the manager. He kept on thinking about her. How can she punish so severely for such simple mistake? I'll take revenge. He neither could concentrate on any work nor could sleep peacefully. Raj was totally depressed. On his friend's suggestion, he reached out to a guru. Guruji, please help me. I am feeling very depressed and hopeless. The guru explained a simple solution to him. Any problem needs to be solved in two aspects. One, at mind level. Two, at the external world. Externally, the problem needs to be addressed with your intelligence. Sometimes you can solve it and sometimes you cannot. But to solve any problems or agitations in the mind, we need to first understand how the mind works. Yes, Guruji, please tell me. Our mind functions in two ways. Involuntarily and voluntarily, which we can refer as thought and thinking. Thought comes involuntarily just like our heartbeat and breath. It comes and goes off to the next beat and the next breath. It is a science. But when we hold on to any thought and repeatedly think on it, we do a voluntary action called thinking. Repeated thinking is the problem. When we understand that the thoughts are not in our control and we cannot and need not change it and take no responsibility or ownership on our thoughts, the mind gets free and liberated. But of course, to solve the problem, we need responsible action. I understand this. But how will it solve my problem? Let me explain further. Imagine you are on a high terrace and suddenly, a thought pops up saying, Raj, jump from this building. What do you think did this thought come automatically or you brought it? Of course, it would have come on its own, Guruji. And it is a stupid thought. Exactly. Thought comes on its own. You don't have control on it. It could be meaningful or totally stupid. Now, would you be listening to this thought and jump? Or realize it was a natural thought just like a passing cloud and just keep walking on the terrace? If the thought was senseless, I would definitely ignore it and keep focusing on my work at hand. What will happen if you ignore the thought, but it keeps coming and you still ignore it? The thought will slowly go off because I know it is of no importance. Now, apply this to your problem. When you keep getting angry thoughts about the manager, realize that it is an unnecessary thought and you can ignore it as a natural one. But my problem is still not solved. Yes, externally, you need action. You can escalate this to senior officials, or file a case, or search for another job, or even accept the transfer. But internally, you just understand the mind that the thoughts come and go away naturally. As you have no responsibility or work to handle your mind, your mind becomes free and liberated and can focus only on the action and not spend time and energy fighting within itself. Raj now understood fully about his mind. He went back to work. When he faced the manager, he automatically got angry. But he realizes that he has no work to change the anger, his thoughts, or his emotions. He did not bring them. So, he did not focus or take responsibility to handle his emotions. What he has to focus now was his decision. He filed a complaint but had to move to another location. There, he prepared for a higher examination and got promoted to a better role. This story is a modified version based on a true incident. The guru who gave this knowledge Shri Bhagavat from Bhagavat Mission